Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. So how are you doing, my friend? How is this week treating you? I hope you had a chance to listen in to last week's episode, where I spoke about Joshua, a wonderful dog who got me through a most difficult part of my life after being thrown from the back of a motorcycle when a car cut in front of us. Joshua and my Daisy were two dogs who were my constant companions through grieving processes, one for death, the other for the death of a body that was shattered and broken and which has never been the same again. Today, I'd like to talk to you about pet loss and how it affects us. First of all, There will always be people who cannot understand our deep love for our pets, and they also can't understand how we grieve after they are gone. Many think it is ridiculous to be grieving over a pet as we grieve for a human. But what they don't understand is, especially for those who have already experienced the death of a family member, partner, or friend, The additional loss of a pet, which may have been an integral part of our life and helped us get through the death of someone we love, can be a secondary blow. That pet got us through some very difficult times in our life. They were our companion, our comforter, the one who was so happy to see us when we got home each evening the one who snuggled up close when we were sobbing, sometimes sobbing right into their coat. They were the ones who always tried to make us feel better when we were feeling so sad. They let us know we would get through this somehow. Companion animals shelter a heavy burden to bring us back to life when we thought we didn't have the strength to keep going. They grieve with us when the person who died was not only loved by you, but by your pet also. They know something is different. They know someone is missing. And they are also longing for your beloved, just as you are. But they try their best to be there for you when you are not feeling your best. When they know you are having a very bad day, and they look after you to do what they can to help cheer you. Yet now, it's their time to move from this life to the next, and you feel devastated. They were your rock. Perhaps after the death of that significant person in your life, they were the only thing you had left to be with you. They were your constant companion, and now they are gone too. But even if no other person has died, and this is your journey after the death of your furry friend, the pain can be just as deep and overwhelming as any person's death. 
And since they were always there for you, the stabbing pain, the empty time, the empty home, and your longing for them is so intense and you just hate it. You reach out for them to pet them, feed them, walk them, even call for them. And those normal, everyday acts don't need to be performed any longer. You don't need to purchase their food, bring them to the dog park, offer for them to come along for the ride when you're out and about. You don't need to plan for all their needs when bringing them on vacations now, or for day trips to the beach, or the lake, or even to visit another relative or friend. And the quietness in your home is so difficult to bear. You miss when they greeted you each day, when they were so happy to see you, when they missed you all day long, perhaps home without anyone to interact with. You might be grieving for your dog, cat, or other animal who you needed to put down because of illness, or they were involved in an accident or other tragedy. Perhaps they simply died in their sleep. However they died, you are entitled to the grief you feel. It is perfectly natural and normal. You love them deeply, and so you grieve for them deeply. Some say the love for their pet was the purest love they've ever known, because it was unconditional, and they only had that all-consuming love from their pet. You might be asking yourself whether you should be so upset over their death, and the answer is absolutely. Every day they were there for you, just like any other person in your life, and you loved them, cared for them, and they made you laugh, and you remember wonderful times with them, like the way they stuck their head out of the car and enjoyed the wind in their face when you took drives together and how you spoke to them like they were a person, and even put words in their mouth as if you knew what they were saying in return to your questions. Or how they tilted their head when you asked those questions, as if to say, Are you really serious? Or was it, I have no clue what you're asking me, but I'll look like I understand. <laughs> Joshua would cock his head to the side, and his ears would raise high when I'd ask him a question. And then he'd bark, or he'd snort, like he was answering me. It was quite wonderful thinking he knew what I was asking, and responding in the affirmative. Why is it when we would say, do you want to go out for a walk? They always seemed to know what that meant. I still think that's so amazing. And I recall when military men and women returned months later after being deployed, their dog leapt with glee when they realized their owner was alive after all. Can you just feel their devastation, not knowing, like we humans, that someone has only temporarily left? Dogs don't know that it's permanent so they are overjoyed when their master returns to them. But I also recall many years ago writing a blog about a soldier who died in action and his dog laid near his casket throughout the entire funeral service. He knew his master was dead, and it showed with his heavy sighs. Pets are intuitive creatures, and we love them for that. That's why when we are sad, they know how to snuggle up to us. Now let's look at our grieving process when our pet dies. A good part of it depends on how they left us. Sometimes the pet is missing, and we have unresolved loss. They may have been lost through divorce or separation. They could have been accidentally injured or killed, or even intentionally injured or killed. They may have been stolen, or died naturally, or became critically ill 
and needed to be euthanized. There is no doubt that if you have no control over your pet's death or loss, you will feel a much deeper grief since the loss would have been sudden and shocking. If your beloved animal has been declining, while it doesn't diminish your pain, you had more control over their being put down and you can prepare yourself for that day. Either way, your deep love for your pet will bring great sorrow since they were such a large part of your life and you must allow yourself time to grieve. And it's not silly or over-the-top sentimental or even crazy to grieve a pet's death. There are countless pet owners who have gone through the same process, so please don't feel like you are alone. Like grieving for humans, we also go through a period of shock where it doesn't seem real and you are looking around for your pet or calling for it when you realize reality sets in. We even deny that they have died so we can soothe ourselves into believing they are still alive perhaps just playing outside. We can also feel anger about the circumstances surrounding their loss, especially if it was sudden or the animal is missing, was lost, stolen, injured, or killed, accidentally or intentionally, or even part of a divorce and you were separated from them beyond your control. You might be angry with a vet that couldn't save your pet, or the driver of a speeding car, even the actual disease that took their life. You might also be angry with yourself for leaving the gate open or not securing an area, and now you need to work toward forgiving yourself. It was not intentional, and you need to remember that. So if this is the case, please be kind to yourself and use the emotional freedom technique which I've spoken about before, which will be an extremely useful tool to help yourself. The guilt of if only I had been more careful can be overwhelming, but EFT will definitely help you there. You might also encounter bargaining with God to see them one more time. And many pet owners have also dealt with depression, especially those who blame themselves for what they did or didn't do on behalf of the pet. Living life without loved ones is a very isolating and sad experience, and whether they are human or animal, they play a large role in our life, and the separation takes a long time to adjust to. It is their presence that we are longing for, that we miss terribly. The everyday interactions, the things we did together. Past episodes of my podcast go into depth about various aspects of grieving a human's death, but they could very closely align with the feelings and struggles we face after our pet's death. So please do listen in to those episodes which you feel would help you now. Next week, we will discuss even more issues that we deal with while grieving our pet's death. Meanwhile, I'm sending you big hugs and love. So now it's time to get up and move our bodies and dance. And while some may think it's a little strange, I want you to do it anyway, okay? Thank you for listening in today. Remember to write five things in your journal each evening that you are grateful for. Visit my website, marymac.info, for my free book, 
Please subscribe, rate, and review my podcast wherever you listen to me and share with those who will benefit from it. And as always, remember to be happy because you deserve to. I'll speak with you again soon.